Welcome to Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm your host, senior writer William Weisbaum, and for those of you joining us for the first time today, Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy gives you an inside look to the many star systems that make up the world of Star Citizen, and we kind of take a look at the lore and fiction that creates these worlds and brings them to life. On today's episode, we will be going to Bremen. So come with me now. Type in a little search here. Wow, this is so handy. Bremen, spelled like Bremen. And we're gonna take a little trip to the system. Travel over there now. And here we are zoomed in, close up on the star of Bremen. It's a beautiful K3 main sequence dwarf star. It's a pale yellow orange. It's lovely. And the system overall is 6.19 astronomical units across. And there is four worlds in the system. And one of those worlds, Rytif, Bremen 2, is UEE represented. So that's fun. They have a senator who reports to the Senate all the way back on Earth, which is where I am. So Bremen was first visited way back in 2441 by the legendary explorer Bao Yun, who was a professional explorer type. He made his living discovering things and selling them. So he was very much in discovery for the profit involved there of in. And he was kind of a Edison type where he had a bunch of other explorers that he would hire to find stuff and take credit for them in his own time. Um, when he found Bremen, he did the whole scan and found that it wasn't particularly valuable, so he ended up selling it to the United Nations of Earth for money. Notice I money, not credits, because credits were not in use at the time. Credits being the official currency of the United Empires of Earth. So when he sold it off, the UNE took over and decided that Bremen II was an ideal candidate for terraforming. So they terraformed the world and settlers slowly began to move in. But it wasn't a huge rush. There was a lot of expansion going on at the time. And overall, Bremen wasn't that exciting of an option. It was considered safe by many. You know, it wasn't on the frontier. It wasn't full of a lot of resources. It didn't have anything that jazzy about it. So its development was a little bit slower than some of the other systems at the time. But for people looking to emigrate away from Seoul, it was a nice, safe, solid choice. So the system did grow and develop. Now, where it really came into its own as a system was during the Tavarn War, the second one, where the UEE was looking to feed their massive military during this war, and they weren't getting enough supplies from their core worlds, who were all really focused at the time on more industrial things like shipbuilding and weapon manufacture. So they turned to Bremen and gave a lot of credits into establishing the agricultural infrastructure there. And Rytef, which was already an agricultural world, had a major boom as all this outside money came in there to really build up their infrastructure and farms took over. Um, and within a matter of months, Bremen was producing more food than anywhere else in the UEE and feeding all those soldiers off the output of grain they were producing. Um, and then, uh, so that went on for a while, and one of the biggest things to come out of that time was a conglomerate. So a lot of the farmers, you know, couldn't have the investment to take advantage of the money the UE was giving out for their farms, so they sought to consolidate, and one such consolidation was Bremen Mills, which took a bunch of independent farmers and united them so that they could do a group negotiation of selling off their crops at a united rate and all sorts of other benefits. Um, and Bremen Mills, over time, would eventually transform into what many of you may know as Terra Mills, which is the company behind none other than Big Benny's. So that's pretty fun. Uh, what ended up happening was Bremen Mills, like the rest of Bremen, faced some hard times uh, when 
way after the war, there was a big falling out in the grain market. The market was oversaturated, there was new sources coming in, and because Bremen had so heavily invested everything they had into agriculture, when the market fell out, the whole system kind of had an economic crash and it couldn't support itself and it had hard times and there was a major disaster on top of it where the main Bremen Mill Center blew up uh, and it was known as the Great Stalford Disaster and hundreds of people die. It was a huge tragedy for the system. But to put a silver lining onto that dark stormy cloud, this other company, uh, Terra Agra, came in and was able to purchase Bremen Mills and form this new company, Terra Mills, which still survives today and makes, you know, cereals and chips and, of course, fast food noodles, such as Big Benny's Cacho to go, which is delicious. Uh, so that's one of the main things that Bremen is known for. Uh, one of the other big things that came out of the system was while they were slowly rebuilding back up from this great grain crash, the system was kind of unremarkable and that had a lot of appeal to kind of anti-Messer activists who had been shunned away and forced to move into Xi'an space to protect themselves. They were slowly smuggled back into Bremen where it became the heart of the anti-Messer movement. They used the system's kind of unnoteworthiness to form the rebellion and really drove a lot of the anti-Messer activity that would become his downfall, their downfall, in the long run. Uh, and so that only came out very recently with the Historical Truth Act, which released all these documents and the wild from that dark time in the UE's history. And a lot of that, uh, seeing Bremen's part in this resistance was a big part of the reason why they recently got their representation in the Senate. So that was exciting for them. So let's go now that we kind of have an overview of the system. Hold, let's zoom in to visit Bremen 1. There we go. So Bremen 1 is basically a small dead rock. Uh, it had very little to go on resource-wise and it was quickly mined out. But what's kind of noteworthy about it is that there's this old belief that it's good luck as you're leaving the system to tip your wings towards Bremen 1, uh, which when it's in visual range, and that gives you good luck on a long hauling run as you're hauling grain out of the system. So from there, we're going to zoom back out. You can see one of Bremen's jump points to Kalos over there. We're going to visit the kind of heart of the system, Reitef, or Bremen 2. So look at it there. Now, Bremen 2 is a terrestrial rocky planet, and it was terraformed pretty early on after its discovery. And we talked about how Terra Mills is a big corporation on the world, but another one that's recently popped up is ship manufacturer Consolidated Outlands is based off of Bremen. Uh, and in a big part, that's because of Silas Corner, the trillionaire who started Consolidated Outlands and personally helped design the Mustang. Uh, the reason why he chose the world is that he himself grew up on Rytif, and he has a long ancestry dating back to his great, 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 whatever, grandfather, who was kind of the de facto mayor during the Second Tavaran War, where the planet had this big boom, and his grandfather was a, well, a distant relative, was able to get in on the ground floor of that boom and made a ton of money in it. Uh, so Silas started off rich and one of his early passions was ships and so he started collecting ships from the age of 22 and today he's got his own personal kind of ship museum on the world where he has a original RSI Zeus which is very rare these days as well as a Drake lobster prototype ship the lobster never went into full production and Silas is one of the few people who owns a copy um, and from this early love of ships, he eventually transformed it into trying to make a ship that he would be happy with. Uh, and it's a real ship for the people, too. It's the best he can do. And he's put a lot of love and heart into that design. And the Mustang sold very well, so people are interested in seeing what Consolidated Outlands is going to do next. 
Um, the other thing of note on RITEF is that there's been this rumor floating around that a valuable uh, ore deposit has been found somewhere in the world, and that's kind of led to a couple interesting things. Some people, conspiracy theorists, kind of suspect that the real reason why the UE offered up representation at this point was to get their hands on that ore um, instead of their role in history, as they publicly claim. And it's seen a lot of kind of treasure hunters surge into the system, and the local uh, police authority have been a little bit overwhelmed, so they've been kind of hiring on extra help to deal with all those miners who have been scouring the world for this so-called rumored deposit. It's lurking somewhere there. Uh, the main landing zone, Stalford, is kind of a more rustic town and it has that small quiet town feel it's it's hung on to that even through all its ups and downs over the years uh, locals consider themselves quiet and polite and generally keep to themselves uh, and in addition to consolidated outlands and the terra mills you know there's a little bit of booming tourism now as people come there to shop for ships and to experience some of the historical things, sites that have been built up, like there's now monuments to some of the anti muster activity that went on there. And so there's also like a fun bar named Tricky's here that produces some homebrew made from all the various grains that they produce on planet. So that's a fun place to visit. So that brings us to Rytif. So we'll zoom out now and we'll head to the next world, which is Bremen 3. Bremen 3 is a terrestrial coreless planet. It's got, it's not hollow, but it has no free spinning core like Earth does. Uh, it's located outside of the system's green band. Let's see, right on the edge of there. And so it's not a candidate for terraforming at all, so it's going to stay the way it is. Uh, and it had a reasonable amount of resources upon discovery, but most of those have been mined out. There's some harder to reach stuff in there, so if you can figure it out, it might be worth your time. Uh, nearby is a well-known uh, asteroid that's known as the Bloody Smile, uh, which used to have a large vein of red-hued aluminum ore that kind of gave it its name, but that's all been mined out since, but you can still see it floating in the area. And then from there, we move to the most distant planet in the system, which is Bremen 4, which is an ice giant. And it's considered by some that it might be a guardian planet, which means that it helps protect the inner worlds from comets and other distant bodies that might be flying to the system by attracting them before they can get past its orbit. Uh, scientists are still looking into that theory. Um, it's got a particularly beautiful landscape, kind of swirling mass of hydrogen and other gases interspersed with its ice fields. Uh, it's relatively dangerous to harvest the gases here, so it hasn't been developed that fully as it's considered a high-risk investment. So there you have it, an overview of Bremen with its massive farming fields and growing cereals like dappers from Terra Mills, as well as its ship manufacturer with Consolidated Outland. So there's some fun stuff to go and check out when you get the chance. And I look forward to seeing you more uh, in the verse next time on Lore Maker's Guide to the Galaxy. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.